Hey, what's up everybody? Thought I'd let you know on the progress that I'm having on replacing caps in my retro systems that I bought kits for from Council 5. Anyways, so far so good. I've done some of my older ones. We're doing ones that I thought would be easy, but some of them turned out to be more of a pain than the thing I'm working on now. Which I think it's more, you're looking at all those capacitors and thinking, oh, this is going to be a pain in the ass. It's turning out to be the easy one. It's the retro ones I had to do a little bit of manipulation on stuff. Anyways, uh, first one I did was one of my Magnavox Odyssey 2 systems. And for anybody that didn't see my last vid or whatever, this is one of them to where you could do the composite video mod right off the board. You don't need a se separate little circuit board or anything. It's the uh, composite video and the audio can be picked right up off the board. So anyways, if you do that, you don't need the little RF box, which on my two Odyssey 2 systems, the RF box just plugs into the motherboard. So you just unplug it and toss it in a drawer. And then there's also a white wire that's just screwed onto it for ground and that kind of runs along the edge of the motherboard and happens to be soldered to the largest capacitor on it. That's something I wanted to show you because uh, anybody new to this that's just trying to get the simple kits, this might throw you. It threw me at first and then boom, the wheel started spinning, the hamster came back to life and click, thought, Oh shit, this is ground. <laughs> is, uh, the one that they give only has two wires. This has three. Or leads or whatever. Anyways, big chunky son of a bitch. That area that's dark there on the side, that is negative. Opposite to that is positive. And then the bottom is the ground where that wire is soldered onto. And I don't even know why they bothered. Or maybe they figured, because of the size of this thing, that it needed to be grounded. Because also the voltage is different on the one that they give. This one's 4700 UF, so is the one they give. All that's right so far on all the systems I've worked on. It's the voltages to where some of them are different. So this is 25 volt, the one that they gave me, which... Shit... It's more like this size, but a straight up and down type one where it's just got two leads with 16 volt. And it doesn't seem to matter, man, the system works great. I haven't had any problems. All the systems I've gotten completed work great. So anyways, that's the only weird thing on the Odyssey 2 other than some of the voltages being off. And also, speaking of the RF box, that takes two of the capacitors you get in the kit. So if you've done the AV mod, boom two less capacitors that you gotta mess with I mean it, it's less than a handful not much to on that system not much to it so anyways on to the next one I also did one of my model one slash Sears versions of the Intellivision doing those two systems I've got one loose that's the one that I painted up and then I got the one that I picked up recently in a box that's in really good shape. I want to replace the caps in that one also. But uh, I had to do some manipulation, mainly because the large caps on it are meant to be sideways and they are glued to that freaking board. Fortunately it is a separate little board so you can carefully unplug the ribbon cable and then another plug and then your power supply plug comes off of it and then you can remove that so you don't have this big chunky ass thing to work on but they are glued down pretty damn good anyways uh, mainly because the way the ca capacitors are that came in the kit they're meant to be straight up and down but for this system you gotta lay them kind of on their side I needed that extra bit of slack as the leads are too short so I cut these with a Dremel right up to the ends of the capacitor and it's nice heavy leads not not something that's gonna bend easy man they're nice and thick so you can just get a little pair of pliers and manipulate them where you want and then solder the leads on the new capacitor to them that's pretty much the only thing that I had to do different on the Intellivision 
same thing man a little bit different on voltages I think those two the voltages were right it was the ones that go on the uh, main boards or whatever that were a little bit different it's different size caps or something I don't know different brands have different voltages or different sizes I don't know I haven't done this kind of work since the 80s my first job out of high school was working for a guy in his basement it's called Adrian Electronics and uh, I didn't do too much soldering and stuff he did teach me how to do it <laughs> so I, I'm skilled at soldering doesn't bug me but uh way you do it was I'd stuff the circuit boards you'd have like a piece of star, star film so I just stuff in all the resistors and circuits and stuff and then he'd send those in to be put into a solder bath just to save the time of doing it and it would just solder them all at once the only time that I got to do any hand soldering was if one of them didn't go in right because sometimes one would fall out in the solder bath or get soldered in the wrong place so I'd have to remove it and put it in a new one but uh, what he built which uh, fortunately the show didn't last long because it sucked all ass for anybody my age maybe a little younger definitely older man you might remember the TV show on MTV remote control he made routing switchers for their video cameras so if a camera went out he just pressed a button on this thing and it would go to the next camera instead of having to switch everything out so I don't know how many years he made him for that show could have been from the start to finish as it didn't last long but uh, kind of a cool thing I got got to make shit for MTV also got to make some cables and stuff for their cameras so decent job and that was the only electronics job I ever had so, gives you some of the back history on me that I'm not just doing this for the first time man I've done it before it's just been a while so that's bringing back memories of shit that I don't want to do anymore because that job I liked it but it gave me some bad freaking headaches so anyways man so far so good on the older systems right now I'm working on my turbo duo which <laughs> is turning out to be easier man I haven't taken everything apart yet I'm trying to just take the easy route and I just took the top part off of it I still have the board and everything screwed into the bottom half and I'm just doing the caps that I can easily get at and then I'll take it apart later speaking of headaches I've been fighting headaches lately because of just wind and shit and we we're having monsoon season so that causes headaches and plus my friggin backs giving me hell so <laughs> not gonna do this one all at once man or I'll be hating life but uh one thing I want to bring up here on it and uh, if you don't have one that's in good shape they're cheap go to like Walmart don't go to Radio Shack and buy theirs. The ones at Radio Shack that are like this suck and the voltage is a lot lower. But uh, Walmart's got these for like, shit. I think they're less than 10 bucks, man. They're cheap. So if it breaks, just buy another one. And it comes with two extra tips. And they're the nice long ones where you just unscrew and then put the whole shaft of the thing into this. So I'll show you what I'm using. If you unscrew that, it's about this freaking long that goes in there until it stops but as you can see or not see because this fucker doesn't want to focus anyways man this has a really good tip on it I put in a fresh one before I started working on this turbo duo and this this starts going away which that's what happens is the tip is start melting off I'll go buy another one of these, man, just to be safe. Is he do get a thing of solder with it, man? So for less than ten bucks, you get some solder, you get the iron, you get two tips. There is a little stand you get with it, so not bad for a cheap soldering iron. But yeah, if you got one where the tips messed up, I definitely don't recommend doing one of these duos with it, man. You you will fuck up something. There's a lot of uh, little microchips on it tiny little things and if you accidentally touch one of those puppies it doesn't take much to heat them off if it falls off the board you're screwed I mean <laughs> especially if it falls on your carpet or something you are screwed 
They're small enough to where it'd be like digging around for a little grain of sand. Then your parents would walk in on you or whatever, or your brother or sister and think that you're on drugs and you're crawling around on the floor like a fucking crack whore trying to find that last golden nugget. So you don't want to do that shit. Anyways, cheap enough. And, uh, let's see, does this get the wattage? Yeah, this one's 30 watt, man. I think the one that I got at Crap Shack, oh, man, I don't even think it was 25. It was like 15 watt, and it may be okay for this, but the problem is if you got any fans going or any breeze going through your house, drafts, anything, it cools down too easy. This stays nice and hot, so you can remove the caps really fast. So, stop the talking on with the show. Oh, man, this thing just does not want to cooperate. Gonna have to do it by hand as usual. Okay. Anyways, there's one of the. Uh, 100 UF caps that I replaced. Say, man, I'm doing all the easy ones. This was surface mounted. And uh, the kit that they give you from Council 5, man, they're all nice and short. I mean, I don't have to worry about bending any of them to one side or the other. I can have them straight up and down and still have enough lead on them to get in there with a soldering iron. Another thing I did, instead of having the leads just straight up and down, I bent the ends out to the sides just enough so I can have them flush against the little solder pads. Same thing with these tiny ones. That one you can really see there. Some of the tinier ones I had to squeeze the leads together just a little bit because I don't want them hanging off of that pad. I'm going by the line that goes around it. I figure that's the safe zone. I don't want them hanging off of it and hitting anything that they shouldn't hit. crazy man <laughs> this is just a few of the caps that's just for the CD area that's probably gonna be the hardest there and then there's a few under here man but so far this is being a hell of a lot easier than the older systems I don't haven't had to manipulate anything on it to make it fit right everything's going together good also <laughs> Even that this isn't focusing, I thought I'd show you guys a Turbo Duo opened up that is not full of rust and acidy shit. Right? I couldn't have scored better. Seriously, guys, I don't think this thing hardly got played. I think they got it at the end of its life because it. I never got the CDs with it. I just got the books, but it just had the original booklets for the CD games that came with the system. So I'm thinking they got those games and they never bought any new ones and it just went on a shelf or got boxed away or whatever. So I mean, other than dust, <laughs> this thing is as clean as it gets. I don't know about under here yet, but I'm really doubting that I have any of these things leaking. They are all really shiny and new looking still. It's crazy, man. It's every video I've watched, Luke Morse's video, another guy's video, where they're replacing the caps, man. There's ones to where that crap's leaked out of them and just corroded stuff like hell, man. <laughs> so that's why I'm doing it before that happens. Better safe than sorry. Another system I did, which uh, I did all but one capacitor on it, which it still looked good, and it was because my big fucking hands, <laughs> hit big fucking fingers, could not get in there to grab the thing to take it out, let alone hold one in place, and that's on the uh, Sega Master System Model 1. And speaking of the kit that they send you, Depending on which ma Model 1 you have, if you have the one that's got the uh, built-in games, that's going to probably take every single cap that they send you. 
if you have the one that I worked on that doesn't have the built-in game, you're going to have a few left over. So don't think that they fucked up or something. It's just a different variation. I'm figuring because the other one needs more caps, it's because there's probably another chip in it that's got the ROM on it for the uh, two games, which is like Hang On and then some Duck Hunt type game. Otherwise, uh, the reason I left one is because in the audio area, there's this big thick piece of metal coming up and then going over and covering up some of the caps you got to replace and there's very little room to get in there. Some of them I literally had to use some tweezers like this. Speaking of tweezers like this, hint, 99 cent store. Fucking awesome place for finding shit like this. You can get a whole pack of these and different sizes. I've got some needle nose ones too, man. They are great for working on this kind of stuff. If you got something to where you just cannot get in there with your fingers, different size tweezers to hold on to them. I got it a while back, so I can't remember how many getting set, but maybe like four or five for a dollar. I mean, there's all kinds of stuff you can get there for working on electronics like this for cheap, man. Like your uh, screwdriver sets you can get for a buck for the precision ones. So <laughs> hit up your dollar store for stuff like that because they will come in handy. But uh, other than replacing that cap, man, system works great. All the other ones were really freaking easy to get at. So kind of depends on what you're working on and uh looks like other than monitors or computers most of the caps that they have are for the older systems to where they're going to wear out or they're just really old and it's better just to outright upgrade them to something newer so I hate to think of how long this event is going to take on uploading it so I'm going to stop it here and if I have any problems come up which I shouldn't because pretty much what I got left after I finish up the uh, turbo duo is just the same systems again so I gotten a couple of them for both of my uh, Intellivision 2's and then a couple sets for the two Sears ones I think that's pretty much it didn't go too crazy oh and I got one more Odyssey 2 which that one I'm waiting on because it's gonna be a pain because it's the one where I've done some mods on it I've got extra cable hanging off of it inside to where I uh, took out the original controllers and made it to where you can use 2600 controllers on the Odyssey 2. Pretty simple mod to do, but just a little tedious as you just manipulate the wires and put in a couple plugs and boom, Atari controllers on that. It just it's going to make it fun to get everything apart again to do the uh, cap replacement. So once again, catch y'all later.